All right, today I'm going to give you a quick uh, spin on the Planning Center um, Music Stand app. So I'm going to use my iPad, but just know that you can also use the Music Stand app on your computer to make any of the annotations. Uh, and all of the annotations that you make either on iPad or on your computer, and yes, you can use your phone, but it's really small. It's like driving a tank through a small window. But all those annotations you make, you can actually come into rehearsal and then on the iPad screen that uh, we provide uh, for you, you can actually call up your annotations. So let me do a quick walkthrough here. So on my iPad, I'm going to um, point out two apps. The first one is the services app. It's actually this green one down here. Um, you'll need this one and then you'll also need the music stand app, this one over here. So um, when I call up a music stand, <clears throat> we're going to begin with this app first here. I'm going to open this up. Um, it'll open up and if I press this hamburger menu up here on the upper left hand corner um, your schedule will be over here sometimes I have to pull down and refresh a little bit so here's the one that we have a rehearsal today when I click on that um, it will bring up all of the songs here in blue now you'll notice that it points out the different keys the song titles but then you'll notice underneath each title it's the type of chart and so let's look at who you say I am. If I uh, pull this up, you can see it's offering a chord chart, a lead sheet, piano vocal, and number chart. Um, let's, uh, I'm gonna, I, I, since I do a lot of producing and I like looking at the actual music because some of the uh, notations are on there that are helpful, as well as um, like if you have string section with you, brass section, um, they're reading down the, the actual measure numbers. And um, so I use lead sheet for that. So I'm going to uh, press lead sheet. It'll download it. And you'll notice that it changed to lead sheet. And I do that for each of the songs. So this one is already lead sheet. Um, and then we have this one. I'm going to do that one to lead sheet as well. Now, uh, when I bring up a song and when I press on it, it gives me, uh, this is a three-page lead sheet for the song Who You Say I Am. Just so you know, if you're uh, if you're preferring a chord chart or a number chart, here's what a number chart would look like. And it's one page, so a lot of people like that when you kind of come to rehearsal with uh, memorized music. Other people <clears throat> like having the actual chords up there. Here's what the actual chords look like. Again, it's one page. And then um, I'm double tapping, by the way, to get back to the outline here. So... And then here's the piano, which piano, it ends up being a lot of sheet music. And on a smaller iPad like this, it's just too, too much music to, to drive through. So um, let me go back. I'm double tapping to get out. I'm going to change this back to lead sheet. Here's how I mark up my music. <clears throat> and you don't necessarily have to mark it up the way I do. But this is my thought process as I typically go through it. Uh, and the reason I mark it up with these highlights is because it's the same for each song for me. And so it's clear, number one. Number two, it's colored. So uh, my brain recognizes much more quickly where I need to go in the song. So the first thing I do, <clears throat> I'm going to tap on the screen once. It's going to bring up this upper bar menu. And on the upper right-hand corner, I'm going to tap the um, annotation tool. So it brings up another secondary set of tools here. And then on the upper left-hand corner, you'll notice I have this. I can draw or I can highlight or I can erase, or I can actually type right into the music, okay? And you can make the type bigger if you want. You can make it smaller. Uh, just know that these are the four tools that you have. So the first thing I do is I come in and I highlight all of my song sections, okay? So like here's verse. Oops, I made a mistake, so I can undo that. I go through and I, I just catch all of the numbers. One, two, three, four, five bridge, six chorus, seven bridge, eight bridge, nine chorus, and the end of the song is there. Now, <clears throat> since I have all the song sections listed, I can easily see, okay, whenever it's, I see a blue marker, that's a particular song section. I use yellow for all of my actual repeats, not a... Uh, DS signs or uh, codas, uh, but for specific repeats. So on this first page, there's no repeats, but if I go to page two, you'll notice 
I have a repeat sign here, and then I have the first ending section here. And that's exactly how I do it. I put a bracket around the first ending. That way I know this is the measure that is in the first ending. A lot of times with these particular charts that we're doing, you might have like 15 bars, sometimes 25 bars within a first ending, and they actually don't even draw the bracket around it. I like using the highlighter bracket around all of the measures. That way my brain is telling me I need to skip this if I'm going to measure two. So now you can see the magic of having the highlighted um, elements here for a repeat. I know right away my brain is saying yellow. I gotta go back and find the yellow counterpart. I can easily see it's back here on five bridge. So I go through the whole piece and I'm, I'm highlighting the rest of the out of uh, the uh, the, the highlighted parts with yellow that are needing repeats. So I did one down at seven bridge. It's probably another counterpart here. And that's a first and second ending. So again, that helps me know, oh, I got to skip that when I go to the third ending. You got another repeat here, counterpart there. Okay. That is all of the, the repeats. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to use green. Uh, by the way, I end up using all four of these colors here. Um, Blue is are the song sections. Yellow are the repeats. Green, um, green are the DSs, so the da signos, um, or uh, back to the cap, the capo, da capo. All of those uh, are green. Anything that's coda related, um, like second time to coda, and then the coda section is purple. So I use these uh, four colors for that. So I'm going to do green. We're on the third one now. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to ask the question, what DSs do I see? And you'll notice there's one right here. And I make this a bracket because I know I need to stop and go back to the sign somewhere. So again, because it's all black and white, now I can come back and be like, well, where is the sign? Oh, it's way over here on section four. So even though the sign is right there, I don't really highlight the sign. I actually just draw a bracket where I need to go back to. So, isn't that nice? On page two, as soon as I take the second ending at measure, what is that, 55, 6, 7, 57, I've got three bars, so 57, 58, 59, I gotta go back somewhere, boom, I can see exactly where it goes back to. Now you can do that in black and white, but I'm getting older, it's kinda nice to have the highlights, and it's right here. And again, all these are gonna transfer to the iPads uh, without even you bring your iPad, although we have iPad stands if you wanted to bring your own iPad. <clears throat> You can do all this on the computer as well, even on your phone, and it all transfers. All right, so um, I think that is the only DS. So all we have left are any of the code of things. So I'm gonna go to purple. This is my purple highlight, and I'm gonna catch anything that is coda related. So here's second time to coda. That's how I bracket it out. And then I find where the coda section is. It's right here. So this is the first step that I do. I use all uh, four colors of highlights and get the song sections, the repeats with yellow, um, the DS's with green, and the uh, codas with purple. Now, <clears throat> what happens if you have edits in the music? Well, here's where I'm actually gonna go back to my services app. I'm gonna open up services for a second. And I gotta make sure I'm on the same particular weekend. Here it is, here's who you say I am. I'm gonna pull this up. You'll notice right here under music edits, you have to be under this particular tab right here under notes. Um, Sutton does a great job of putting these edits in here and making it crystal clear for those that are traditional music notated readers, which is very, that's not normal to have a worship leader that will do that. And he does a great job with this. So look, he has in here, Cut uh, measure 77, okay? So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to here and I'm gonna find measure 77, which is this first ending at the top of page three. Do you see measure 77? This is cut. Now, I've seen people do this two ways and I've done this two ways uh, the past year and I'm telling you, this is the way that I've ended up in, um, but this it's a personal preference. I'm gonna show you the old way that I used to do it and I'll show you the new way. The old way is I would come in here like this, put an X through whatever we're deleting, and then notice that there's actually a repeat sign here. So this, this particular repeat sign right there is gonna be out. So you could, I, you could leave that scratched 
or you come back here and do this. What I prefer to do, because I've gotten very comfortable with this, is actually to white this out. Now I know this, again, this is the second newer method that I've been using and you might be like, ah, that's not what I really like. So let me show you what I would do with this. First, I'm just gonna delete this. I'm gonna go back and also delete what, where the measure is. And I kind of use a white out. So I'm gonna go back to my pen tool, change it to white. I have to actually increase the size a little bit. Um, let me go a little bit more. And I'm actually going to just white out this measure. Now, it doesn't have to look amazing. It just has to work. Now, look at, uh, you have a third ending here, correct? Well, in your brain, you have to be thinking, I don't even need the third ending now because I'm not gonna be using this repeat over here. We'll take care of the repeat in here in a second. Um, so basically, I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to um, just white out that third ending, okay? It also means, and I'm gonna reduce my size here, it also means that this repeat is out here. So um, I, didn't do, I didn't do a very good job of that. Let me just go like that, okay. So for me, this new way that I've been doing it is just a little bit better, but again, it's personal preference. Some people are like, no, I wanted to know originally there was uh, a repeat sign that was out there, but I think from my brain, the number of rehearsals that I've been in, I just want it gone. Just show me the music exactly how we're gonna play. And because Sutton nails this like 99% of the time, I know I can white it out and be pretty confident. So now when I'm trucking through Seven Bridge, when I get over here, I know immediately it's gonna go from uh, this measure 76 to whatever the measure it would be 78 uh, before the bridge. Now you'll notice that I actually deleted a little too much uh, because the bar line is not showing. I actually can come in here and just peek over, see how that works? And then be like, eh, I just wanna peek that a little bit. Okay, so that, that is um, kind of how the, the, new, the new way is that, that I do. The other thing that I sometimes do, if, if I knew that the edit said cut measure 77, I come in here and I actually will say cut measure 77. <clears throat> and sometimes I just copy and paste it. And I just put it up near the title. The reason I do that is because if I don't see anything up here at the, at the top of the where the title's at, then I know the music is as written. Um, and I quickly can tell, okay, there's edits on here that are not in the original music. I see some red lettering here that says cut measure 77. Uh, it's just, it helps as the MD, the music director to even say, hey, just remember the edits for this one is we're gonna cut measure 77. You don't have to sit here as a music director and be like, uh, let's see, what did I edit, what didn't I? So that's why I do, do that particular thing. All right, how does this annotation get uh, uh, piped over to the, the iPads that are on stage? Well, while you're on this screen with this stuff here at the top, you can see, uh, and let me back out of this. I'm gonna double, t I'm gonna single tap in the center. When I single tap, it gives me a display mode with no toolbars. Let me single tap again. And you'll notice here at the top, I'm gonna to pull down this menu where this arrow is up here. I'm gonna pull down this menu and it says under uh, file, I, I, I could um, select a different uh, whole file to use here, uh, but I'm not going to. But if I go to where it says my annotations for this file, look at the other people's annotations. Let's say, um, now I'm not sure who is MDing tonight. Let's say it is Mike Palace. I can actually come in here, select Mike Palace, and any annotations that Mike has, look what Mike has done. On page three, he has already taken out with his red pen, measure 77. And so some people are like, ah, I don't want all the highlights, I just want, so it's just a nice way that you can pull up, if you know someone's gonna be MDing and you come in here and their annotations, let's look up John Mills here. And I don't even think John is on, no, I think John is on tonight too, and he's done the same exact thing. If you want the full kit and caboodle, that's typically what I do. <clears throat> now I'm gonna mention one other thing. I have an Apple Pen, and I've been using my finger this whole time. This is the first time I can use my Apple Pen. If you are producing, um, you have to get to this level in the music, and you, if you're just a musician on stage, you don't need to worry about this, but if you are producing, what you need to know is who has the main riff at the intro? Who is the one that is going to sing the melody when the song begins? 
where does the vocal harmony come in? All of those notations, I actually hand write in as we go in purple using the Apple Pen. Now you could do this with your hand, or you could do it another way, or you could actually do it with a, um, a laptop and chug it in that way. But I just do it right here on the iPad. So I'm gonna come back in here to my tools. I'm gonna select uh, purple, and I'm gonna get this down a little bit more. And basically what happens is, let's say um, here at the beginning, it's gonna be an acoustic guitar groove. The reason the producer needs to know it's an acoustic guitar groove is because they need to tell verbally to the uh, video director, hey, this song begins with acoustic guitar. Now the video director is gonna frame up the cameras on the acoustic guitar. As I say that as the producer, the person sitting next to me is the front of house audio engineer. The audio engineer, if they're not wearing muffs or ear, they're gonna hear me say, oh, acoustic guitar. Now they're putting their hand on the fader. So what happens is when we go live with the song and we begin recording, the cameras can show the acoustic guitar the sound engineer can push up the um, acoustic guitar and um, everyone knows that. But I'm not going to know any of that as a producer until they have their music rehearsal. So that means during music rehearsal, I'm going to come in here with my Apple Pencil and I'm going to watch and listen to what happens on stage. If I see acoustic guitar playing, I just come in here and just type for myself acoustic guitar. Um, and then let's say the very first um, soloist is going to be... Um, uh, Brian here. So I, I'll just type, I'm, I'm writing, uh, not super legibly, my name, Brian. And let's say they add harmonies here. So sometimes I just do plus harm, meaning harmony. If it's only another singer, then I don't have to write their name. If there's three singers, then I might want to instead say plus uh, uh, Janet. Okay. And for me, whenever I do plus, that means it's it's an added harmony. If if I did something like this, it would be just a Janet is actually taking over the melody lead. So I make some you know notes along here along the way, and after we do the first music rehearsal, I have all those purple notes in there. Then I know the next time I come back and, and do this song, I can be like, yep, yeah, I'm not producing. I'm actually playing keys this week. I'm just gonna take out all of my purple stuff. So that's kind of how I, I lay my stuff out. If you're using my annotations, know that the purple stuff that I'm writing in is really for producer stuff on the production team, not necessarily music type stuff. Um, and that's the quick crash course. Now, <clears throat> let me just go ahead and do another song quickly for you. Um, I will wait for you. You can notice that I have edits in here from a previous week and there's quite a few hefty edits in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start clean because I really, I don't like taking edits that I had before. I'm just gonna come over, whoops, I'm, I'm going a little too fast. Let me, let me come back here. At the top right hand corner, I'm gonna click the annotation tool and then clear all and it's gonna give me a choice, either this page or full attachment. If I chose this page, it will only clear this one page and it'll leave page two, three, four, whatever many other pages there are. I actually wanna clear the whole attachment. So I'm going to click full attachment and notice it only took out the um, annotations of this song. So you're not clearing the full attachment of all of the attached songs. You're just removing um, any annotations that are on this particular attachment. So let's see how quickly I can go through and do this song. If you want to time me, ready, set, go. All right. So I'm going to come in here and it's going to be this, this three, four, five, I'm looking for a six, a seven, an eight. All right, that was all the numbers. Now I'm gonna come in here with my um, repeats. I'm gonna catch all the repeats. See the magic of several bars of getting the yellow in there. Okay, I think that's all the repeats, right? Nope, there's one more. Here's another short guy. Here's another short guy. Now that's the end of the song there. So now let me go back and I'm gonna do the green. So again, I'm going in order. Uh, there's gonna be a DS in here. So let's find the first one. That's the one side and then here's the bracket. And then I'm gonna go to the coda part and here's the second time to coda. And here's the coda um, section that we jump to. Now, did I miss anything? I don't think so. So the next question is, 
Um, what do I have as far as music edits? So I'm gonna jump over here to my services and this is, I will wait for you. Okay, so there's lots of edits here, okay? So I'm gonna copy these. I'm not sure if you can copy them. I'm admin, so I can copy them, but if not, you may have to hand this. So, I mean, hand to type them in. So I'm gonna paste those comments in there. Sometimes they're a little too long. I like to make them just a little bit shorter. Okay, so this says <clears throat> cut 81 to 84. So I'm gonna go find 81 to 84. Uh, and I'm cutting these, so I actually need white and I need this to be a little bit large. Okay, we said 81 to 84. So here's 81 to 84. I, I think it's through 84. So all of this is out. Let me go back and see if that was correct. Yeah, 81, 82, 83, 84. Now, cut measures 92. So let's go do 92. There's five, four, three, two. So this measure is out. I didn't like that. So there is that measure out and then 101. So here is 101. Whoops, I'm on the next song. 99, 100. 101. Oh, it's this whole first ending. So I'm actually going to remove this stuff and then put in the white out. This is all out. He's going straight, straight to the end. And again, this may seem like it takes a little bit of extra time, and it does. Um, but what I'm doing is, in the moment, it is really preventing me from having to second guess where exactly are we going? Which measure... Which measures are we hitting? Which measures are we not? And this pretty much caps off this song. It took me, what, probably about three minutes? Maybe four to do a song? I think it's worth about 10 minutes, 15 minutes to go through and kind of get a feel for the song anyway and uh, make sure that you're actually getting the uh, right roadmap put in. So you'll see Yes and Amen. I have not done it yet, but I'm going to. I'm going to actually end up coming in here and clearing all. Let me show you one other trick before I do this. Uh, let me just go ahead and clear all because I had old edits. and Those were really old edits. That was a totally different style that I'd used um, more than a year ago. So what I do sometimes, let's say on Yes and Amen, let's say, let's say the, the um, worship leader said, I, I only want to do the chorus of this. So let's say chorus here is in section, um, right here in section three. So he's only going to do this part sometimes what i like doing is you can actually come up here to the center menu um whoops can i do it here okay i guess i have i cannot be in uh annotation mode i have to i have to actually click done and get out of annotation mode first then i can go into the top menu here and i can um then come in, in under reorder pages so i'm going to click on uh, reorder pages and you'll notice it's showing me all three pages. All I have to do, if I don't want page one and three, because really the chorus only lives on page two, and I don't want to have to hunt through pages to get to the chorus. I want to come out of the previous song into this one and know, boom, I have to be on the chorus. What I'll do is I'll actually click the X on page one, and you'll notice that it actually disappeared, and then I'll click the X on two, you can always put them back because they are living down here on the bottom, okay? So if I wanted to put three back, uh, oh, add pages by dragging them up. It's not letting me drag them up, folks. Well, I've done it before, but I don't know why I won't do it now. Double tap, single tap, nothing. Well, I guess I could hit cancel and do it again. I, before I was able to click and drag these guys up and I don't know why it's not, oh, there it is. That was weird. Okay, so you can add the pages back that way, but let me click save. So top right hand corner, save. I'm gonna click done. And um, my lights went off down here. They're on motion sensors, you like that? See how I'm coming out of this song? I'm hitting the end of, uh, this is I Will Wait For You. So I get to page three. And notice when I get to the end of page three, boom, I turn the page and there's just one song right here. Really what I could do myself a favor in is I could come in here and um, 
again, I go a little extreme on this. I can actually come in here and be like, yeah, I just want to know that it's going to be right here on this course. So I come in here and I just white everything out. And I'm like, I, I just want to know that I'm starting right here. I don't want anything else to distract me. And boom, there you have it. So that's how you can take out certain pages. You can reorder some pages if you need to. I don't use that a ton. Um, there are some other features on here that I did not cover today, like, um, ooh, this is a really good one. I should have showed you this one. You can actually play back some of the songs. So I press the top right play button, and you'll notice that it's loading underneath here, and it's gonna play the song. if I don't have it plugged in my computer and I'm screen recording here. Um, but what's nice is then you can actually practice your music with the iPad and you don't have to switch out of apps or have a second device and, and play over here, but yet look at your music here. That's a nice feature. It also has things like a metronome in here that we, that we don't use. And yes, we know that we can sync up all of the, the metronomes. And yes, we know that we can actually sync up page turns. You could have one music director being the master page turner and when he or she turns their page, everyone else on stage, their music uh, turns at the same time. We're just not quite that fancy. But know that you can get your annotations from home, from either a computer, iPad, or a phone, if you wanna drive the tank through the small window, and, and those will automatically load into the iPads at the church. Last thing I'm gonna mention is know that at the um, a church, some of the iPads have a little bit older operating systems. So some of the um, some of the tools and stuff that I showed you today might be a little bit different, but that should get you this should get you at least headed in the right direction of how to pull up annotations and how to use the music stand app out of planning center services.